Welcome to our channel Medicine A to Z. Today we are going to discuss about hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Definition. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis, also called extrinsic allergic alveolitis, represents an immunologic reaction occurring within the pulmonary parenchyma caused by hypersensitivity to an inhaled antigen. Restrictive lung diseases can divide to extrinsic and intrinsic restrictive lung diseases. Extrinsic causes are problems outside the lungs. It may be a neuromuscular causes like myasthenia gravis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, or it can be a diaphragmatic paralysis or pleural effusion. When it comes to intrinsic causes, the problem originate inside the lung. Problem can be within the alveoli or in between the, the alveoli. If it is inside, the alveoli we call it diffuse non-interstitial lung diseases, and if the problem is in between alveoli, we call it interstitial lung diseases. Interstrial lung diseases can be an immune response to antigen or other causes. If we know the antigen, we categorize them separately. Example, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, organic dust interstitial lung diseases like bisonosis, and inorganic dust interstitial lung diseases like silicosis or beryliosis. There are hundreds of hypersensitive pneumonitis named according to the antigen, and if you don't know the antigen, we categorize them separately. Example, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. Other interstitial lung diseases are sarcoidosis, connective tissue disease, etc. In hypersensitivity pneumonitis, antigen-presenting cells capture the antigen and present it to T helper cells. The T helper cells then activate B lymphocytes, which produce IgG antibodies specific to the antigen. These antibodies mark the antigen for destruction. When exposed to the antigen for the second time, or after the antigen binds with the antibody and forms antigen-antibody complexes, a type 3 immune response begins. Then inflammation starts, leading to either a fibrotic hypersensitivity reaction or a non-fibrotic hypersensitivity reaction. Chronic exposure causes a type 4 or delayed hypersensitivity reaction and forms non-caseating granulomas. Clinical features of hypersensitivity pneumonitis include cardinal features such as cough and dyspnea, along with chest tightness. Additionally, constitutional symptoms such as fever, chills, weight loss, and malaise may be present. In pneumonitis, there can be numerous allergens, and the disease is often named based on these allergens. These allergens can include fungi, mycobacterium species, bacteria species, chemicals, organic dust, and more. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis is associated with farming and agriculture, leading to various specific conditions. These include farmer's lung, bagasosis, tobacco grower's lung, mushroom washer's lung, lycopertinosis, potato riddler's lung, paprika slicer's lung, winemaker's lung, cheese washer's lung, coffee worker's lung, and tea grower's lung. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis can also be associated with ventilation and water-related contamination, resulting in specific conditions such as humidifier fever, hot tub lung, sauna taker's lung, and lifeguard's lung. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis associated with grain and flour processing includes conditions such as Miller's lung, malt worker's disease, and grain measurer's lung. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis associated with milling and construction includes conditions such as chemical worker's lung, detergent worker's lung, Pauli's regent lung, vineyard sprayer's lung, epoxy resin lung, Bible printer's lung, and machine operator's lung. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis associated with birds and poultry handling includes conditions such as bird fancier's lung, poultry worker's lung, turkey handling disease, canary fancier's lung, and duck fever. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis associated with veterinary work and animal handling includes conditions such as laboratory worker's lung, pituitary snuff taker's lung, furrier's lung, bat lung, fish meal worker's lung, coptic lung, mollusk shell, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, and pearl oyster shell pneumonitis. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis associated with milling and construction includes conditions such as wood dust pneumonitis, sequoiosis, maple bark disease, wood trimmer's disease, wood pulp worker's disease, suberosis, composite worker's lung, dry rot lung, thatched roof lung, and aspardo dust pneumonitis. Fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis is characterized by the development of fibrosis, or scarring, in the lung tissue due to chronic exposure to allergens. This fibrosis can lead to a progressive decline in lung function and may require medical intervention, such as oxygen therapy or lung transplantation. 
On the other hand, non-fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis typically presents with inflammation and immune responses in the lungs without significant fibrosis. Symptoms may include cough, shortness of breath, and chest tightness, but the condition may not lead to permanent lung damage or fibrosis if the exposure to allergens is removed or minimized. Fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis presents with a clinical presentation of progressive dyspnea on exertion, cough, and fatigue. It often has an insidious onset and can clinically resemble idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, IPF. Radiological findings on high-resolution computed tomography, HRCT, typically show evidence of fibrosis, such as reticulation, traction bronchiectasis, and honeycombing with a subpleural and basal predominance. Histopathologically, fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis exhibits features of interstitial fibrosis, including fibroblastic foci, collagen deposition, and architectural distortion. Prognosis is generally worse compared to non-fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis with a higher likelihood of disease progression and respiratory failure. In non-fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, the clinical presentation typically involves acute or subacute symptoms, including fever, cough, dyspnea, and malaise. Symptoms may improve with avoidance of the inciting antigen. Radiological findings on high-resolution computed tomography, HRCT, commonly show ground glass opacities, central lobular nodules, and a mosaic attenuation pattern due to air trapping. Consolidation may also be present, while fibrotic changes are usually absent or minimal. Histopathologically, lung biopsy may reveal lymphocytic inflammation, granulomas, and organizing pneumonia patterns. Fibrosis is typically absent or minimal in non-fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Prognosis for non-fibrotic hypersensitivity. Pneumonitis is generally better compared to its fibrotic counterpart. Investigations for diagnosis of hypersensitive pneumonitis, high-resolution computed tomography, pulmonary function tests, bronchoalveolar lavage, lung biopsy, and histopathology. Investigations that are not commonly used in clinical practice for hypersensitivity pneumonitis include serologic assays for specific IgG antibodies. Although specific immunoglobulin G, IgG assays are available for many potential antigens, their use is controversial and not routinely performed in clinical practice for diagnosing hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Testing of environmental samples. This involves testing samples of causative antigens against the patient's serum, but it is not commonly used in clinical practice due to limited availability and uncertain clinical utility. Lymphocyte proliferation test. In vitro lymphocyte proliferation testing of a patient's serum or bronchoalveolar lavage, Bell, fluid to avian antigens, has been described in chronic bird fanciers hypersensitivity pneumonitis, but it is not widely utilized in routine clinical practice. Skin tests. Skin tests are not helpful in diagnosing hypersensitivity pneumonitis as they primarily test for IgE-mediated allergies rather than IgG-mediated immune responses which are typically involved in hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Therefore, skin tests are not routinely used for diagnosing this condition. In HRCT findings of non-fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, HP, several characteristic patterns are observed. Diffuse ground glass opacification. This is a common and nonspecific finding in non-fibrotic HP. Small airway involvement. Features such as poorly defined central lobular nodules, Multilobar areas of decreased attenuation and vascularity, or expiratory air trapping, may indicate small airway involvement in non-fibrotic HP. Mosaic pattern. The combination of ground glass opacities and areas of decreased attenuation and vascularity results in a mosaic pattern on HRCT. Three density pattern. This pattern, previously known as the head cheese sign, consists of areas of ground glass opacity, decreased attenuation and vascularity, and normal lung. It is highly specific for hypersensitivity pneumonitis. These HRCT findings, when observed together, can aid in the diagnosis of non-fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis and differentiate it from other interstitial lung diseases. In HRCT findings of fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, several characteristic patterns are observed. Fibrosis. Fibrosis may exhibit a random distribution, be mid-lung zone predominant, or show relative basal sparing. Traction bronchiectasis and honeycombing may be present, 
but usually do not predominate. Evidence of small airways disease. Features such as patchy ground glass attenuation, centrolobular nodules, mosaic attenuation on inspiratory images, and air trapping on expiratory images, three-density sign, may indicate small airways disease in fibrotic HP. Combination of reticulation and the three-density pattern. The presence of both reticulation and the three-density pattern, areas of ground glass opacity, decreased attenuation and vascularity, and normal lung, is highly specific for fibrotic HP. These HRCT findings, when observed together, can aid in the diagnosis of fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis and help differentiate it from other interstitial lung diseases. Pulmonary function tests, PFTs, do not have diagnostic value for hypersensitivity pneumonitis, but are valuable for determining the pattern and severity of lung function impairment. PFTs may reveal a restrictive pattern or a mixed restrictive and obstructive pattern in patients with hypersensitivity pneumonitis. In non-fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, lung function may improve after cessation of exposure to the offending antigen. However, this improvement may not always occur and depends on various factors, including the duration and intensity of exposure. Diffusion studies, specifically the measurement of the diffusing capacity of carbon monoxide, DLCO, are often performed in patients with hypersensitivity pneumonitis. The DLCO is invariably reduced in hypersensitivity pneumonitis, reflecting impaired gas exchange due to lung parenchymal damage. These pulmonary function tests provide valuable information for assessing lung function impairment and monitoring disease progression in patients with hypersensitivity. Pneumonitis. Bronchoalveolar lavage may not always be necessary, especially in patients with a convincing exposure history and typical HRCT findings. BAL is primarily used to detect abnormalities in the cellular composition of the lung fluid. A marked bowel lymphocytosis is a helpful finding when the clinical and radiographic findings suggest subacute hypersensitivity pneumonitis. It's important to note that patients who smoke cigarettes tend to have lower bowel lymphocyte counts, which may complicate interpretation in these individuals. Furthermore, bowel lymphocytosis can also be observed in other lung conditions, such as organizing pneumonia and nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, NSIP making bowel findings less specific for hypersensitivity pneumonitis alone. Therefore, bowel results should be interpreted in conjunction with clinical history, radiographic findings, and other diagnostic tests for an accurate diagnosis. Overall, a comprehensive approach that integrates clinical history, imaging findings, BL results, and, when necessary, histopathological examination is crucial for di diagnosing hypersensitivity pneumonitis accurately. In diagnosing hypersensitivity pneumonitis, a confident diagnosis can often be made when there is evidence of exposure to a provocative antigen along with classic features on HRCT, such as small centrolobular nodules, ground glass attenuation, and lobular areas of decreased attenuation and vascularity. Bronchoalveolar lavage lymphocytosis more than 20% can provide additional support but is not always necessary. However, in cases where the diagnosis remains inconclusive despite clinical features and HRCT findings, histopathologic examination of a lung biopsy specimen may be required. For patients with features suggestive of HP, but HRCT showing patterns like organizing pneumonia or nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, or when HRCT shows usual interstitial pneumonia, UIP, but clinical suspicion of HP persists, a lung biopsy is often warranted. The histopathologic features of chronic HP can be subtle and may require careful examination by a pathologist with consideration of clinical context and multidisciplinary review. Ultimately, a confident diagnosis of HP is based on the presence of typical histopathologic features consistent with the disease. The treatments for hypersensitivity pneumonitis include antigen avoidance, removing or minimizing exposure to the offending antigen is crucial in managing hypersensitivity pneumonitis. This may involve changes in occupation or lifestyle to reduce exposure. Corticosteroids, such as prednisone, are often prescribed to reduce inflammation and suppress the immune response in hypersensitivity pneumonitis. They are typically used in cases of acute exacerbations or when symptoms are severe. Smoking cessation is important in all lung diseases, including hypersensitivity pneumonitis, 
as smoking can exacerbate lung inflammation and damage. Seasonal influenza and pneumococcal vaccinations. Vaccinations against seasonal influenza and pneumococcal pneumonia are recommended to reduce the risk of respiratory infections, which can worsen hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Pulmonary rehabilitation programs may be beneficial for improving exercise tolerance, managing symptoms, and enhancing overall quality of life in patients with hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Supplemental oxygen therapy may be necessary for patients with hypoxemia, low blood oxygen levels, to improve oxygenation and relieve symptoms. Additional immunosuppressive agents. In cases of chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis that have not responded to antigen avoidance and systemic glucocorticoids, additional immunosuppressive agents such as azathioprine, AZA, and mycophenolate mofetil, MMF, may be considered to help suppress the immune response and reduce inflammation. Antifibrotic agents such as nintadanib or perfenidone may be considered for the treatment of chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, HP, with progressive fibrosis. These medications aim to slow down the progression of fibrosis and preserve lung function. In cases of advanced disease with severe respiratory impairment and progressive fibrosis, despite medical therapy, lung transplantation may be considered as a treatment option. Lung transplantation may offer a good mid-term prognosis compared to idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, IPF, in select patients with hypersensitivity pneumonitis who meet transplantation criteria. The decision to pursue lung transplantation should be carefully weighed based on individual patient factors, including disease severity, comorbidities, functional status, and overall prognosis. It requires a comprehensive evaluation by a multidisciplinary transplant team to determine candidacy and assess the risks and benefits of the procedure. Stay updated with the latest in medicine. Subscribe to our channel for comprehensive videos covering the latest updates in the field.